a lot of our kids with autism have a hard time learning to use pronouns and possessions appropriately. So here we are showing you our pronouns and possession program to give you tips on how to teach pronouns and possessions to your learners. Hi, I'm Shira. And I'm Shana. We're behavior analysts that create weekly content about how to teach children with autism so that they make real progress. And we create shareable resources to make your job just a little easier. Today's topic is all about how to teach pronouns and possession. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on new video releases. So very often we teach our students something like my turn, your turn, and it becomes a very abstract concept for them. They don't really understand what the my and your means. And sometimes they just end up memorizing my turn, your turn, and it becomes a little bit scripted. So it is really important for students to understand the difference between mine and yours. It's a great advocacy skill for them to be able to say, no, this is mine, give it back, it's mine. And for them to be able to know that some things are yours and some things are mine. So we do wanna start teaching our learners the difference between mine and yours, and then eventually building up their language to be able to understand that abstract concept of pronouns and possessions. So where to start, phew. Typically, this is an intermediate program. I would never start this with a beginner learner, but somebody who's got some language and, you know, they've got a relatively good handle on nouns and verbs, you know, then I would teach pronouns possessions. So typically the way we would start is receptively, right? Show me yours, show me mine, um, usually with body parts, because that's really easy. Um, you know, show me your nose, show me my nose, show me your elbow, show me my elbow, show me my shoulder, your shoulder, et cetera, et cetera, and go back and forth that way. Sometimes I even use a mirror to teach that if they need to look at their facial expressions as well. And then the next step would could be with items. So still receptively, you would put out a bunch of items on the table. So here we have um, a couple personal items of our own, and we would ask the learner, take some of their items as well, to, to show me your hat, show me my pencil, show me your cup, and it should be things that are very clearly theirs or very clearly mine. See, as I'm saying this, I'm mixing up the pronouns, it gets confusing, <laughs> but um, that they're understanding that these belongings are mine or they're yours. And that would be the second step. And then after that, then we would start expressively. So after they're able to say, or after they're able to point to show me yours, show me mine, then it would be holding up something and saying, you know, whose phone? And they'd have to say my phone. You can even use a text cue, something like this. So, you know, whose, and you know, you wouldn't put student, you would put their name actually. And it would say mine or whose, yours, something along that lines. And then fade the text cue using the same teaching step so that eventually you're able to say whose hat and they can answer mine, whose cup, they could say yours. And that would be the second step for them to be able to expressively identify items that are mine or yours. And then after that, we get into, you know, more nuances. So things like verbs, right? So, you know, who is jumping? Oh, somebody would have to stand up and jump, but who is jumping? Who is clapping? Um, and then you might even say to them, you know, clap your hands and then who is clapping or say the whole thing. Um, I am clapping my hands and that's a big skill. If any of you are familiar with language for learning, um, language for learning is a direct instruction curriculum by Siegfried Engelman. I absolutely love it, but there's a part in there that says, you know, uh, I am clapping my hands, say the whole thing about what I am doing. And my learner will actually say, I am clapping my hands. And it's like, no, 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 you're supposed to say you are clapping your hands. And that's where it gets difficult. So, you know, we can do uh, some scripts along that line and teach them, no, I am, you are um, clapping my hands, your hands, et cetera, and teaching them that. So let's share a data sheet with you and show you our teaching steps and how we take data on. So here's our data sheet on pronouns and possession. And, uh, you know, the instructional procedure, you know, you're sitting across from a student, you're asking certain questions. Here's the teaching steps. We already went through things like identifying yours and mine on body parts, real life examples, and then going through more and more teaching steps. Um, they're all laid out there for you, so I'm not going to go into them too much detail. But in terms of graphing, you know, what we're going to do is just do a really quick baseline, right? So my baseline could even just be, you know, what whose is this? Um, touch your nose. You know, what are you doing? 
etc. Um, and I'm not going to do too many of them because if I know they don't know pronouns, they don't know pronouns. I've got my zero on my data sheet on the same day that I'm going to go right into teaching step number one, and I'm going to teach, you know, showing receptively on body parts and items on the table. And, you know, I was teaching it and the student didn't understand it at all. They got zero. And then, you know, the next day I go back and I'm teaching again and I'm filling out like, you know, yes, no's trial by trial. I might be mixing and varying in other things as well. They get 30%. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be great if a graph actually looked like this? Sure, I just straight <laughs> up and it looked pretty. beautiful. Yes. Um, you know, mastery criteria is 80% for two consecutive sessions. This student gets, you know, 90% for two consecutive sessions. So I change the condition. Then I can go on to step number two. And I can do it on the same day. If I've, you know, already done step number one, I can go on and just baseline step or pretest step number two and start from there. And if you are using the text queue, then you can divide up step two or step three so that it says 2A, so that they can still get it correct if you're needing to use the text queue. It's okay to use text queues. And then you have a plan to fade them. So 2A with the text queue would be correct up until C with the text queue. You're still teaching with that, but then D and E becomes correct if it's without the text queue. So you can divide that up as much as your learner needs that text queue to you know prompt. We've broken it down into really specific points like text queue plus a gesture to the text queue plus a verbal prompt. Some of our learners need that for three trials and some of them don't need it at all. And some of them need it for, you know, a hundred trials. So really this can be individualized based on your learner. And you may only have, you know, teaching step number two, A and B uh, with a text queue and without a text queue, or you may have it broken down this much. For more information on prompting and prompt fading, go check out howtoaba.com slash the prompt hierarchy. Uh, to summarize, we talked about how to teach pronouns and possession, starting with mine and yours as an important skill for the learner to understand that some items are mine and some items are yours, and then being able to label those accordingly. So click the link in and around this video to download our free visuals for teaching mine and yours and join the behavior resource membership to get these detailed programs, visuals, and data sheets to use with your clients. For more information on how to teach pronouns and possession, click the link on or around this video or in the description to download this free visual. We also encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and leave a like and comment below if you have further questions.